guys get? Well, what a day. What a great uh, day to be in Tarpon Springs at Rusty Belly's Waterfront Grill. And uh, people are having a great time here, and uh, they have a great staff, so we're excited. We got a lot of great people here. Our Speaker of the House, Chris Sprouls. This is your district, right? Yeah, that's his district. Wanted to make sure of that because I know these bills are important to him. We also have President Wilton Simpson, uh, whose district obviously is uh, Pasco County. Uh, Senator Ed Hooper, uh, Senator Ray Rodriguez, Senator Daryl Rusan, Representatives Cheney, Coster, Busada Cabrera, Tomko, Latvala. Um, we also have, uh, who's that? Chief Resilience, Miami Dade, that's Chicken Scratch, I'm sorry, Jim. Um, we also have Noah uh, Valenstein, DEP, Mark Raines, our Chief Science Officer for the State of Florida, uh, Julie uh, Rafe Mel, Executive Director, Audubon, Florida, uh, Alec Bogdanoff, Florida Lead, American Flood Coalition, Don Sh uh, uh, Sharefs, Florida Director, Environment Defense Fund, Rod Braun, Nature Conservanc uh, Conservancy, uh, Randy DeShazo, Director of Planning and Research, Tampa Regional Planning Council, Dr. Tom Frazier, USF, formerly Chief Science Officer in the state of Florida. So that's an awful lot of folks. We want to thank you for being here. Uh, as soon as I took office, we developed a bold agenda uh, to be good stewards of Florida's environment. And a key component of that agenda has been uh, recognizing and addressing coastal resiliency and flood mitigation. Uh, we're a very flood-prone, storm-prone state. Um, we wanted to be able to take action to help protect our folks. So today, we probably take the most significant steps that have been taken in Florida in quite some time. Um, we're establishing immediate and multi-year plans to tackle statewide flooding and coastal resilience. Uh, in working with uh, the president and the speaker, the legislature delivered on my calls for meaningful, significant investments in resiliency by delivering three major bills and over $640 million, marking 2021 as the most sig significant year for resiliency in recent memory. The centerpiece of this collaboration is the Resilient Florida Grant Program for the legislative session. I included in my budget recommendations the proposal to establish this important program. It was clear that President Simpson and Speaker Sproul shared our vision, uh, and with their leadership during session, the legislature came through strong uh, by sending this bill to my desk. And so we will sign SB 1954 uh, to the bill establishing the Resilient Florida Grant Program. Uh, this will help fund uh, local resiliency projects throughout the state. Um, uh, local governments and local communities understand the impacts uh, that flooding can have on their communities, and this new grant program will allow the state to partner with those local governments uh, in our shared mission to address coastal resiliency and the protection of our coastal communities, infrastructure, and residents. The Resilient Florida Grant Program will be administered by the Department of Environmental Protection. The department will produce a resiliency work program funding $100 million worth of projects every single year. Uh, similar to the Transportation Work Program, input from local and regional stakeholders will be important in understanding the needs of coastal communities and developing a priority ranking list for the Resiliency Work Program. Through this legislation, there's also a strong academic partnership created through the establishment of the Florida Flood Hub for Applied Research and Innovation at the University of South Florida. This new research hub will incorporate some of the brightest academic and scientific minds in flood mitigation to complement state efforts with high quality data and research support for Florida's robust resiliency efforts. Uh, this potentially could make Florida a national leader in research analysis and integration um, in terms of integrating that with public policy. We're also signing the Resilient Florida Trust Fund and Dock Stamp Distributions legislation, uh, and this supports uh, what we're doing. It creates Resilient Florida Trust Fund within DEP. Monies deposited in the trust fund are available to be used as a funding source for the Resilient Florida Grant Program, also for, for flooding and coastal resilience, also for uh, regional resilience uh, efforts, and then costs to operate the grant program, including planning and development. So this trust fund will be the primary funding source for grants through the Resilient Florida Grant Program. will also support administrative and operational costs for the newly created Florida H Flood Hub for Applied Research and Innovation. 
Now, to advance these efforts, $500 million uh, are directed to seed the Resilient Florida Trust Fund, and then this amount will be on top of the $116 million in dock stamp distributions redirected to the Resilient Florida Trust Fund by way of SB 2512, uh, which will be signed soon. In addition to the $116 million allocated to the Resilient Florida Trust Fund, SB 2512 directs another $116 million to Florida's Water Sustainability and Accountability Trust Fund supporting the Wastewater Grant Program. And so uh, that was obviously uh, one of my priorities, also a priority of Senator Simpson. So I'm proud um, that this priority of Senator Simpson um, has been brought to fruition. Um, we think that this will uh, have a positive impact on many communities throughout the state of Florida. Uh, so in total, uh, this is a really significant amount of resources. We're really putting our money where our mouth is uh, when it comes to uh, protecting uh, the state of Florida, and particularly our coastal communities, uh, from the risks of, uh, of flooding, on storms. And um, I think it's a really great day. It's a really historic day. We're going to let some of the folks uh, who are part of this come up and, and say a few words before I, uh, I put pen to paper. So, uh, Speaker. Thank you, Governor. Yep. Well, thank you all, and, and Governor, I appreciate uh, you being here. It's great to be here in Tarpon Springs, which is my hometown, in Pinellas County, which is, of course, uh, of course, the town, the, the county you were born in. Uh, it's also great to be here at, at Rusty Bellies, uh, here in Tarpon Springs, just down the street from my house. On, on the left side of us and behind us is the Anclo River, uh, which dumps into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, here in Florida, for many people, including Jack and Julie Russell, uh, who started here and own and operate Rusty Bellies, the water is not just a lifestyle, but it's a way of life. We're blessed to be surrounded by beautiful oceans, by lakes, streams, and rivers all across our state. For Floridians, for many of the people who are eating and drinking over there, the water is as common as a backyard barbecue. Many families, mine included, come out here and enjoy the natural wonders that our state has to offer. But with these blessings comes great responsibility for each one of us to do what we can to protect our beautiful waterways and sustain us, but also to protect our neighborhoods and protect our businesses from the might of Mother Nature. With sea level rise, we see our risk grow exponentially, from storm surge and tidal flooding to groundwater and flash flooding. Every time there's a significant rainstorm here in Tarpon Springs, we're at the, the end of the sponge docks, the most western tip of the sponge docks here in Tarpon, you will see those streets down there flood. Cars can't get through, businesses can't operate. It brings commerce to a standstill. We can debate all day the whys and how this happens, but what if we just do that and we just debate it all day, we wouldn't do anything. That's not what we're doing here today. Our communities are at grave risk, and the legislation here today that the governor will sign acknowledges that. There is no question of if it will happen, if we will have significant flooding in our state. The question is only when. Much like hurricanes, we know they will happen. The question is where will they happen? and how bad will they be? And while we look forward and we always plan for these disasters, so too we must plan for resiliency and coastal flooding throughout our state. I'm reminded of that Latin phrase, semper paratus, which is the motto of the United States Coast Guard, which means always ready. In February, I joined with our Florida House members who are here today, including Demi Busada Cabrera, Senator Ray Rodriguez, Senator Simpson, who we offered an op-ed together uh, during the course of the summer on sea level rise and flooding, to announce our always ready agenda the most robust plan in the history of our state to mitigate the effects of flooding and sea level rise throughout the state. To combat this problem, we need real solutions. To protect Floridians in their homes, their backyards, and their communities, as well as financially with their insurance, these bills address the impacts of flooding and sea level rise with policy, plans, and state dollars. A lot of state dollars. The legislature will invest $100 million each year to tackle these problems and the effects they cause. The governor mentioned the $29 million, which will set up the program to allow local governments, cities like Tarpon Springs, to do risk assessments about their communities and the flooding that's happening, and to submit those to regional entities who can vet them so we have experts looking at them, and then ultimately submit those to Noah Valenstein and the Department of Environmental Protection so we can do the projects that are most going to be beneficial to our community. We also appropriated, as the governor mentioned, $500 million out of the coronavirus relief money to help sustain the program in the future. We also require the Department of Environmental Protection to conduct a comprehensive statewide flood vulnerability and sea level rise assessment. What does that mean? It means we're going to go out there and we're going to get the best state-of-the-art data that's possible so that we can begin to build solutions around the right information so that we can make the right choices. The assessment will identify the state's inland and coastal infrastructure and communities that are vulnerable to flooding. 
This will help us better assess threats and figure out a plan that is both responsive and effective. We will then submit those to those regional resiliency coalitions so that the work can be done locally before it ends up in Tallahassee. While water touches all four corners of our, all, all corners of our state, the needs of each are different. This bill will allow accurate reflections of each individual community so that the planning and the infrastructure investments that are made could help that specific community and their needs. Finally, the bill creates the Florida Flood Hub for applied research and innovation with the University of South Florida's College of Marine Science, which is down the road here a little while in St. Petersburg at their USF St. Pete campus will be the home of that innovation flood hub. We knew that we could no longer stand, stand idly by and not plan for the future, that we needed to be always ready. I want to thank Governor DeSantis for supporting not just this always ready flooding agenda to prepare our state and our residents for the future, but for being a true champion for Florida's environment. I've been prepared to defend this anywhere. This governor has been the most environmentally friendly governor that we have ever had in the state of Florida. He's been a champion for the environment and its natural beauty, but he's also helping us now protect our communities from flooding and sea level rise. I want to congratulate uh, Representative Demi Busada Cabrera. Uh, who as a freshman lawmaker from South Florida carried this very big and complicated bill through the legislature and did so with, with great poise. I also want to thank uh, Representative Linda Cheney, who also partnered with Mike Twitty, our property appraiser here in Pinellas County, to come up with a constitutional amendment that will allow everyday Floridians to make upgrades to their homes and be free from additional taxation as a result of those, of those upgrades as well as Chairman Buchanan and Masulos, whose committees oversaw uh, this product as it moved to the legislature. Again, Governor, thank you for, for doing this. Thank, thank you for being part of the agenda. And President Simpson, thank you for being such an amazing partner in the Senate. Thank you, guys. And I'll um, be a little uh, um, brief. Um, first of all, I want to thank um, Chairman Ray Rodriguez. He carried this legislation in the... Um, Florida Senate. Um, Senator Hooper um, lives in Pinellas County and is a resident here. And I believe Senator Albritton, um, which has been a key component of our environmental oversight, um, is, that was, been, was a big key. But with this legislation, we are finally elevating flood mitigation as a critical part of Florida's public safety infrastructure. I'm grateful to Speaker Sprouse and his vision as we talked through this summer. Um, it was something that was very important for both of us, whether you're on the sea level you know, on the coast, or at the beach, or you're inland, and just have flooding problems. This is very important for us. <clears throat> With 35 coastal counties containing the majority of our population and economy, our risks are only going to increase. Over time, the combined effects of sea level rise, storm surges, and extreme rain events will have a significant impact. As lawmakers, we have a duty, a duty and a responsibility to plan for the future to address emerging public safety issues. It was an honor this year, Speaker, to work with you and your team and the House members and Governor. Um, the Speaker said it well. You've been the most environmental friendly Governor we've ever had. And um, we appreciate your leadership on this issue. Thank you. Great. All right. Great. Leadership starts at the top. We have a Governor that has championed our environment, a President of the Senate who has supported that effort, and a Speaker with a vision of what we needed to do on the issue of coastal flooding and resiliency. I'm proud to have played a part. I think this legislation is going to benefit Floridians for generations to come. Thank you. All right. Cabrera. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, it's quite the honor to be here today. It's quite the pinch me moment, uh, not only because I'm surrounded by so many amazing leaders in our state, but what we're accomplishing as a state. Uh, combating flooding and sea level rise, that's something that has been long overdue in our state, and we are about to be leaders in flood mitigation. And to get that done, it takes the right leadership at every level. Thank you, Speaker Sprouse, for, for giving me the opportunity to have a small part in this and entrusting me with that. Thank you to our governor for always protecting our environment and putting our communities first. And thank you, President Simpson, for making sure that this is a priority. You know, we, we've used a lot of words. Uh, we've probably used every word in the thesaurus uh, for uh, foundational, transformational, groundbreaking. And we use those words because it's true. Because everyone here today understands that it's time to act. 
that it's time to make sure that we protect our homes. It's time to make sure that we protect our communities. It's time to make sure that we don't leave future generations with nothing. It's time to protect our state as a whole. It's time to make sure that we're always ready. Thank you. What a great day, very historic. We're really excited. Uh, you know, we did so much. This wasn't necessarily even something that was that much talked about.